Hi, my name is Nancy and I'm a physical therapist with virtual care. I'm gonna to talk to you today about Parkinson's gait. And I'm gonna specifically talk about freezing of gait. This is gonna be part one today. And I'm gonna do part two next week. And um, I'm gonna go over some cues and strategies that you can use to help prevent freezes or to get out of one. So I'm gonna share some slides with you in the beginning here. So with Parkinson's disease, frequency of gait is the leading cause of falls and it causes a fear of falling. Freezing of gait, it will not happen to everyone that has Parkinson's disease. So you may not get the episodes but they have found that 26% of patients that have mild Parkinson's have freezing episodes and 80% of patients with advanced Parkinson's will have freezing episodes. The freezing episodes tend to come on and they're, they're very sudden and they um, are usually short time and very temporary. There's usually triggers that cause the freezing. And it's really important that if you do have problems with freezing, that you understand what these triggers are and try to identify them so you can try to prevent them in the future or work on things that would help with that. So some of the common triggers are initiating gait. And that's when you're just starting out with gait and you're just taking your first step. That can be very difficult. Often um, turning corners can be very difficult or turning around. Also going through sh thresholds, you may have a problem and those could be like a doorway coming from the outside of your house to the inside, changes in flooring. So in your house, for example, you might have some wood floor, you might have some carpet. So going from that wood floor onto the carpet or even a wood floor onto tile can cause triggers. Also navigating around obstacles um, or being in a crowded environment. So this could be in your home. It could be just the furniture you have in your home. It could be out in the community, trying to navigate in a restaurant around some tables. Or if you find yourself in a crowded environment and there's lots of people. Also divided attention and dual tasking. So this is when you're trying to do two things at the same time. So if you're trying to walk, and do something else like maybe carrying a glass of water to your bedroom or talking on the phone. That can cause triggers. Um, also distractions. So maybe you're walking and somebody calls your name or your phone rings, that can cause a trigger. Also stress, anxiety and fear are a big one. Um, and what happens is once people have problems with freezing of gait or have problems with falling, it increases stress and it increases anxiety. And so this can bring on those episodes. Also anticipatory. You can just anticipate that you're gonna have a freeze. So the big thing with freezing of gait that you wanna remember, the most important thing is never fight the freeze. So you don't wanna, what happens is you'll get stuck. Your feet are actually stuck. It happens suddenly. You don't wanna continually try to take the next step. What you wanna do, you wanna remember, don't fight the freeze. In general, you're just gonna stop, take a breath and start again. So there's a stopping strategy you can try to remember. It's the four S's. You wanna stop, stand tall, 
shift your weight and take a big step. So the key to um, getting out of a freeze is to unweight one foot so you can take a, a big step. So that's the key. So again, the important things, never fight the freeze, stop, take a breath, start again. You can use the stopping strategy, stop, stand tall, take a breath, shift your weight and step big. Okay, so remember the key is unweighting one foot so you can take a step with the other. And when you do take a step, you wanna take a big step and actually kick your foot out and get down to your heel. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna show you some um, strategies that you can use. Some people call them tricks or cues. So I'm gonna back up so you can hopefully see me. Okay, so like I said before, the key to getting out of the freeze is unweighting one foot. So shifting your, let, your weight so you can take a big step with the other foot. So simply weight shifting side to side is one thing you can do to work on that. Now you really wanna think about um, shifting your weight. Some patients try just to do their head side to side. That's not what you wanna do. Or some patients try to do the hips and that's not what you wanna do. You wanna get your whole body going to the right or going and then going to the left, all the way to the right, all the way to the left. Okay, so if you have room in your home, you can try to follow along with a few of these. Um, be sure that you're safe. You might wanna use a kitchen counter um, or a high back chair if you need to. So, we're gonna try, um, we're gonna work on the weight shifting one first. Okay, so I'm just gonna count one, two, three, four, and then you're gonna take a big step and get your heel down. Okay, so I'm gonna turn to the side so you can kind of see me take the step. So if you wanna follow along, you're gonna go one, two, three, four, shifting your weight and take a big step, getting that heel down. Okay, and we'll go one more time. One, two, three, four, and big step. So the weight shifts are one thing you can work on. Now, another thing is just simply practicing starting and stopping with your walking. So, you can take three steps and stop. So if you get in a freeze, again, remember, don't fight the freeze. So you're gonna stop. You're gonna take a deep breath, stand tall. You're gonna shift your weight and step. And you can go one, two, three, and stop. And then one, two, three, and stop. And just practice the starting and stopping. So we'll try that one again. So again, if you get in a freeze, you wanna stop, stand tall, take a deep breath. Big step, one, two, three, stop. And you can continue, one, two, three, stop. So you could even do this if you were out of the park taking a walk, you could maybe for 20 feet, try doing that and just doing the stopping and starting. Another thing is when you get in a freeze, instead of trying to continue going the forward direction, you can change your direction. So you could actually step out to the side and then go forward. 
okay? So let's say we're in a freeze, you're gonna stop, you're gonna stand tall, take a deep breath. You're gonna shift your weight, take a step to the side and then step forward, big steps. Okay, so again, stopping with the freeze, standing tall, taking a deep breath, change direction, step to the side and go forward. Okay, and then another thing you can do is when you get in a freeze, you can shift your focus away from your legs to something else. So you could shift your focus to your arms. So you could try reaching up, pointing up to the ceiling or pointing somewhere. You could touch your head. You could swing your arms, take deep breaths, and then try to go forward. Okay, so let's try that again. So, again, shifting your weight away from your legs, you're gonna reach up, you're gonna touch your head, swing your arms. You don't have to do all of this at one time, you could do one or the other, and then take deep breaths. So let's try that again. So, your attention away from your legs to your arms. So, you get in a freeze, stop, stand tall, take a deep breath, reach up, do some, whatever you want with your arms, touch your head, swing your arms, deep breaths, and then go forward. So also, um, as I mentioned, one of the triggers can be attention or if you get distracted. So what you want to do is really focus on what you're doing. You can do this by verbalizing and actually verbalizing what you're going to do. So you can say, okay, I'm going to take big steps. I'm going to get my heel down and swing my arms and then go ahead and do that, big steps, swinging your arms, getting your heel down. Okay, so verbalizing. So if you get in a freeze, you could stop, you could stand tall, take a breath, and then you could say, okay, I'm gonna walk to the bathroom, I'm gonna walk down the hall, I'm gonna take big steps, I'm gonna get my heel down, I'm gonna swing my arms, and then go ahead and go. Another thing you can use is imagery that can be um, very powerful. And often athletes use this. Gymnasts might imagine um, their floor routine before they go out and do their floor routine. Or swimmers might imagine um, the laps that they're gonna swim. So you can imagine in your head and think and visualize yourself that you're gonna take big steps, you're gonna kick your leg out, get the heel down, swing your arms, try to keep your feet apart. And that often is very, very helpful. So I'm also gonna show you, um, um, I'm gonna show you an exercise you can do that can be very helpful. Now, if you need some balance, you can um, get at your kitchen counter or maybe hold on to some high back chairs or if you have somebody that could stand by, that would be helpful. So again, weight shifting is the key, okay? In order to take that next big step. So a really good exercise that you can do is just to step sideways. So 
sideways one side and really shift your weight and big steps and then coming back, shifting your weight each time onto your leg. Okay, so we're gonna try that again. So stand tall and weight shift to the side, side to side. Okay, and then back. Okay, so those are some simple things that you can try. Whoops, I think it's too close, sorry. Um, that you can start on to help fight the freeze or fight the freezing episodes. Um, so again, the weight shifting, the um, starting and stopping, taking three steps and stopping, uh, thinking about moving your attention from your legs to your arms, doing something with your arms, um, changing direction, stepping to the side, focusing your attention, verbalizing, using imagery. There's also some things, visual cues, which I'll talk about next time, auditory cues, and I'm also going to talk about specifically turning and turning around and turning to sit because that can be difficult areas that can cause tr triggering. So I want to thank you for, um, for coming and watching. And I hope you learned something and have a great rest of your day. Okay, bye-bye. Okay. Um.